Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is this Heiker Dreen. I'm a tech entrepreneur and I will be the moderator of this beautiful panel. So we will start. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah. You get the mic. Assalamu alaikum, Sbal Khair and good morning everybody. My name is uh, my name is Lamin Wardi. I'm 15, experience, uh, 15 years experience in the telco sector, heading major accounts uh, for Ericsson in Algeria, partnering with service providers, mainly to build and help uh, them to manage their uh, network infrastructure. And uh, I'll try today, from our perspective, to give a glance of the technology trends that are happening globally, and that we probably will discuss on how we can make the best use of it for the startups ecosystem in Africa. Thank you, Lamin. Isaac, please. Bonjour. Hello, everyone. I'm Isaac Nyambayao, coming from Cote d'Ivoire. I'm sorry this morning I will invite uh, everyone because uh, I will uh, express myself in French because uh, I want to be very comfortable and, uh, you know, give my thoughts on this important topic. So for those who don't have their hair, uh, the, the, the hair uh, phone for the headset for the, for, the, for, the, for the translation, they should go and ask for. Je vais donner mon avis justement sur les tendances en termes de technologie. Isaac, excuse-moi de t'interrompre, là on se présente et après on va... Mais c'est ça. Autant pour moi. <rire> je me présente, donc je suis là pour donner mon avis sur euh, les tendances technologiques et puis euh, comment est-ce qu'on pourrait avoir un agenda commun euh, sur ce qui va être les tendances. Donc je travaille chez l'opérateur postal ivoirien et donc euh, j'interviens dans l'écosystème euh, de la poste en général dans le monde parce que je préside euh, l'Union Postale Universelle. Merci. Merci, Isaac. Sharon Lee, please. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shireen. I am the co-founder at Takado, which is a cooperative insurance built on the blockchain. Um, I'm originally from Singapore, so... Uh, I've lived uh, in the United States, I've lived in the Middle East, I'm currently based in Riyadh, and I'm very honored to be here to participate in this conversation uh, about Africa and African startups. Um, I am a serial entrepreneur. This is my fourth company that I've built. The last company that we uh, built was acquired by the IKEA group in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. Um, so I look forward to a good conversation. Thank you. Mohamed Fakiri from Ukudu. Ukudu is a digital identity company. We cover Middle East and Africa. And we are, what we are building, we're building the identity rails for the uh, continent and enable everyone to be able to verify themselves regardless whether they have an ID or not. And I know it's a big challenge and uh, I don't know what I've done in my previous life, but uh, that's what we are trying to solve. Thank you, Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Murad Bouraj. So uh, mainly I work in artificial intelligence. I work in Silicon Valley. I've been in uh, Silicon Valley for uh, 12 years, 10 years at Yahoo. Now I'm working at uh, Intel and taking care of the, the artificial intelligence academy in Intel. So mainly uh, I'm going to uh, work. Uh, I do have a startup here, Algeria AI. Foundation of Artificial Intelligence in Algeria. It's about uh, infrastructure and finding a way to solve problems in Algeria, especially the national priorities using artificial intelligence. So it's all about creating startups uh, using artificial intelligence to solve problems. Thank you. Thank you, Murad. Hello, hello everybody. Chris Kwasi Coxon. Uh, I've got about 20 years in the tech industry in Europe, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, I'm also an early stage investor now, and I'm part as well of the Founder Family, uh, which is a group of 90 entrepreneurs and with access to 
uh, local ecosystem in 30 countries in Africa. We are partnering of the partner of the event. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, the panelists. Uh, our panel is more about discussion, innovation in Africa, and we talk about Pan-Africanism, uh, the experiences, and uh, you, all of us, coming from the private and public sector, sector uh, can we share exactly your vision? Um, can we start with Isaac, coming from the public sector, about his vision? Uh, because we talked yesterday about this, uh, this few information, and can you give in every cost exactly what is the impact on which kind of innovation or your vision about this to be more involved in our continent? Euh, donc merci hein, de me donner la parole. J'ai un petit avantage euh, d'être parti du secteur privé pour rejoindre le secteur public. Euh, euh, donc j'ai l'avantage euh, d'être venu du secteur privé et d'avoir rejoint le secteur public parce que bien des fois on, on, on a trop regardé le secteur public comme euh, un secteur qui, qui, ne, qui ne fait pas dans l'innovation mais qui des fois peut-être a, a, a mal fonctionné parce que n'ayant pas invité euh, des acteurs du secteur privé qui peuvent donner un coup d'accélérateur à quelques initiatives. Alors, euh, pour ce qui me concerne, moi j'ai rejoint donc une entité publique euh, qui est La Poste, donc une vieille machine de l'administration euh, qui est vue comme une entité ancienne et vieillotte, alors que... Euh, elle, elle n'est pas décédée ou elle n'est pas en train de, de descendre aux enfers parce que la technologie est apparue, mais elle peut se relancer et, et revenir pour servir les populations et être un, un acteur du développement socio-économique de nos pays, de nos continents, avec l'innovation. Donc pour, pour être très bref, euh, moi j'ai récupéré la poste donc avec un engagement d'en faire... Euh, une infrastructure donc au service des citoyens, bien évidemment avec l'appui du digital. Donc on a dessiné une vision qui est la poste maison du citoyen et des entreprises coursiers de l'État. Parce que j'estime que euh, c'est une entité publique qui peut être le bon vivier des start-up et des opérateurs de l'innovation pour apporter des solutions, puisque notre métier c'est de servir les populations. Donc une nouvelle façon de créer un écosystème qui permet d'accompagner bien évidemment les populations, l'État, l'administration. Donc, euh, pour, pour citer un seul, un seul exemple, la lettre recommandée que vous connaissez tous les jours, qui est faite de façon traditionnelle aujourd'hui, nous l'avons lancée d'une autre façon, la lettre recommandée avec donc, la blockchain qui permet donc euh, euh, d'apporter de la signature électronique et, et, et servir les avocats, les notaires. Voici une forme d'innovation où un opérateur public n'était pas attendu, mais qui dit « waouh ». Donc on peut faire ça dans l'administration publique, bien sûr avec la combinaison du public et du privé. Voilà. Thank you, Isaac. And it's a very good point. You talk about blockchain. We are now, during this, this year, uh, a lot of startups develop blockchain. We are talking about Africa coin. And maybe this kind of innovation can help the public sector to be close to the citizen and the private sector. Why not? Maybe your perspective about Sharon Lee uh, as a serial entrepreneur, uh, the kind of innovation on your vision uh, in Asia and Africa too. As a what, I'm sorry? Your vision, Middle East and Africa, about your, this kind of blockchain or another innovation. Yeah. So, hi everyone. Um, I think one of the reasons why the blockchain exists today is a very common reason globally. It's not only in Africa, it's not only in uh, Southeast Asia, it's everywhere in the world. And the idea is we have had about a century, no, not a century, several decades of financial turbulence due to the intervention of central banks, centralized actors who are controlling the financial systems. And as a result, have um, caused a lot of global troubles. And I think this is evident in um, Africa today as well. So the currency is a problem, financial systems. So I've been here for the last couple of days and I've been talking to different people and um, I'm asking them 
about you know, what are the issues in Africa that they think can be solved with blockchain. And one of the things that comes up is always a question of trust, right? How much do people trust their governments in Africa? So yesterday we had a conversation and one of the key pain points that people were talking about was we need to go paperless, we need to go digital because people don't trust their governments, okay? Or rather centralized actors. And this is the promise of the blockchain. This is the promise of decentralization and having our financial systems rebuilt, separate from current day infrastructure on a blockchain that we as the people can have control over. And I think this is a message that resonates everywhere in the world, not only Africa, but in Southeast Asia, in the Middle East, and uh, I think especially the West as well. Thank you, Sharon talk about blockchain, but we have an expert here in AI, Murad. He spent 12 years in uh, Silicon Valley. So what is your vision if you compare the Silicon Valley there about innovation daily on here in Algeria and in Africa? If you compare which kind of, what is the gap for you exactly on your perspective between the two continents? Yeah, I can talk about artificial intelligence and uh, I, did, I did a lot of research comparing the, uh, the ecosystem in Silicon Valley compared to Africa in general, and specifically for Algeria, because I'm from, uh, from Algeria. I think we need to think uh, first about the infrastructure. The infrastructure is the most important thing to start if we'd like to do uh, artificial intelligence or any uh, entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem. Uh, and stand in our universities, because Silicon Valley value, it's all about the university. Silicon Valley is in Silicon Valley in the south of San Francisco. It's because of Stanford. It's because of UC Berkeley. So these two universities are generating a lot of good students. That They have this uh, spirit of uh, entrepreneurship, of startups, creating uh, or building ideas that can be very successful in the future. And this is why we are talking about Google. We are talking about Facebook. We are talking about Microsoft and Apple. Um, in artificial intelligence, it's even more complicated because it's all about the cutting technology, the cutting edge technology. And the, for this, we need to prepare ourselves, uh, collecting the data, protecting our data. I'm not talking only about Al Algeria, I'm talking about Africa. Okay? The only center of artificial intelligence in Africa is in Ghana. Do we have some people from Ghana here, Accra? I don't so, think so. The only center of artificial intelligence created by Google is in Accra in Ghana to label the data. This is all what they do. The first center of artificial intelligence in Algeria was created in 2019. And we are very proud because I think it's the first artificial intelligence center in North Africa. Uh, and I, have, I had the honor to build it with the University of Skigda. And we are trying to build other centers uh, and it's connected to university because we cannot disconnect university of any ecosystem. You see the attachment in Silicon Valley between the university and the student in, uh, in startups. Uh, we have six players of startup uh, ecosystem like in Silicon Valley. We are talking about universities, we are talking about startups, large companies. We cannot build startups without large companies. Is Google who is helping any startup to be a successful startup. About the spirit, employees, uh, people, they work at Google and then after this they, 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 have, they have these ideas and inspired by the, when they were employees in Google and they create their ideas. We are talking about uh, uh, investors, money. We need money. We need funds to create startups. We are talking also about uh, co-working spaces ideas, to build ideas, we, know we need a lot of brainstorming. We need a lot of brains. As African, there is no one, no one, who is going to solve problems except Africans. Don't expect anyone from outside who is going to come and solve your problems without anything back. So this is why I'm in Algeria today. It's because all the experience I have, or I had in Silicon Valley, I'm going to deploy it to my country, to my continent, because I am African and I'm Algerian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Murad.
maybe attract talent there with the GAFAM on the Stanford, UC Berkeley. Uh, why the investors, we have a lot of investors in Africa and out, are maybe shy, are afraid to invest. You talk about Google, the Cinevent Center uh, in Ghana, and I think it is Senegalese who is the, 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 the guy who manage this uh, innovation center. Uh, I create an innovation center in Tunisia, Africa, but we'll talk after about the, the experience in AI on how, attract, how I can attract talent to stay in Africa, to work in Africa, and to help other countries. Maybe the problem in Africa, we are intraconnected. So in our countries, Togo, uh, Algeria, Sudan, Ivory Coast, but we are not interconnected. And the step after is to convince the investors how they can push, how they can invest to develop this kind of project, university, private or public university, or in the public sector too. Chris, what is your perspective as an investor and serial entrepreneur for here in our continent. So thanks for the, the question. I think as an investor, so as you mentioned, uh, uh, a lot of people, especially in Africa, are kind of afraid to actually invest. But I want to, 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 to mention that there are a lot of investors. Now, officially as an investor, the main problem is actually giving money and thinking about getting the money back. In Africa, and we're actually working uh, with different people, different investors, to, to try to fix problems. The idea is to try to get money, but in the meantime, trying to actually provide a, an impact. A main issue as well that uh, I've observed is that it's not just about the money, it's as well how to actually structure the different ventures that we're working with uh, to make sure that they will be successful. And that, that can be uh, in terms of uh, actually helping them to organize themselves, connecting themselves with the right person, connecting themselves with the large companies as well, as you, as you mentioned, with the whole ecosystem. Yesterday, we were discussing uh, with uh, different experts uh, about uh, creating a fund of funds, uh, uh, the idea being that a fund will have a specific uh, uh, amount of money, but that will be kind of limited and will have a limited action. And the idea of creating a fund of funds will be to actually have a bigger impact, investing in other funds to actually help disseminate that money to have that impact. And I understand as well that as part of the discussions of the African Union uh, Ministerial Summit, they are talking about coming together to actually create a big fund of funds. I don't have the, the, the exact number, but they were talking about billions of uh, doll US dollars to actually uh, help out with that and officially provide it to, uh, to, to investors to actually uh, help with the deploying it. And just the last word on that, uh, there is the, the ISF, a gigant uh, startup fund, uh, which is as well partner of the, that event, which is actually actively working. I think they have a 400 million uh, US dollars fund, and they're trying to actually uh, 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 help startups, first in Algeria, but as well in Africa, to actually uh, help deploy the, the startups. Thank can you. Uh, can I say something? Just an anecdote. Um, so yesterday we saw Yasir, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm an outsider, so I'm going to give you an outsider point of view about investing in Africa. So Yasir actually tried to raise money in the Middle East, and my co-founder Murad will tell you. Um, this was several years ago before they raised this mega round. And one of the VCs that we're close to, they saw the deck and they were very interested. They were like, this is a great business, we want to invest, but what is the climate in Algeria? Is it stable? If we put money in, can we get money out? Um, what is the currency situation like? Uh, and so these were the concerns of the investors from outside. They are kind, they, they're not, it's not clear, legislatively, regulatory speaking, whether or not an investment into Africa will be safe, and if there are returns, can we take them out? So this is a, a perspective, hopefully. Right. It's good, because we are, we are talking about connecting, communicating. It's the, the four C rules. So the first is to connect people, to more communicate, to collaborate and to create something. So you speak about, uh, you spoke about uh, Yasir, a Serie B startup, and it's an Algerian company, but now it's a 
maybe I hope it's a, it will be the f next unicorn in Africa. And maybe as an Algerian company, Lamin, you can explain or maybe show us what is your perspective in kind of innovation in Algeria and in Africa too. Yeah. If if you allow me, I will I will maybe try to give at a glance what's happening globally, and then we start reflecting on what is happening in Africa and how we can be a positive actor of in, in, in that change. So globally, there are a lot of trends that are happening in technology shifts. We, for, for sure, 5G today is one of the main shifts that, are, that, that is happening, and it's growing faster than all the previous technologies. And I will explain why I'm saying this. Uh, if we look at the 5G that was launched just a few years ago, so it's starting by uh, it was at the early 2019. Uh, by end of this year, there would be around 1 billion uh, of subscriptions by end of 2022. Uh, in Africa, we still have 50% of the population covered by legacy technologies. Why, why I would like to mention this, because I think it's important that we understand that today, if we want to innovate, we need to look at the connectivity as a basic need, such as water or electricity or such things. Uh, we talk about digitalizing, but if you have a startup that have ideas, that have brilliant uh, innovations, but if they are not enabled, to put in practice what they want. We, we heard also a lot of interesting discussion in the previous panels on the challenges and the difficulties that we have for the startups. And I was thinking on how we can take advantage of having synergies between different startups from all around Africa. Imagine that if we have the needed connectivity and we put, instead of competing between the countries or competing in the ideas, but more having a network of these startups all, all around the country. We have hubs, we can have different hubs. We have in Algeria, in Ghana, we see more hubs coming. But imagine that we have a hub specialized in one area, another working into another area, and then we start connecting. So connectivity is becoming a serious basic need today, and this is how we need to look at it. And uh, it's not only about the public or private sector, so we need investors today. We need to make sure that we are, as African, able to attract investors to work on making this shift. That's one thing. Then, uh, Murad mentioned artificial intelligence. So today, artificial intelligence is happening in almost all the daily routines, in the processes. We don't see it, but it's in, embarked in our phones. So. This is also happening and we need to maybe uh, start being a leader in what we want to do ourselves. Uh, we are perceived as consumers at the market, as a market, but we need to start leading our own ideas. Today, Africa is uh, raw material, right, uh, sewer, so we all look at it this way. But in fact, let's try to start working as a positive actor. This is what I wanted to say here in order to influence all this. There are other aspects of the technologies, the rise of uh, uh, augmented reality. Some of us call it metaverse like uh, as a new trend. But imagine what advantages we can take also from augmented reality. Uh, we heard also uh, challenges on having competencies, right? Uh, also from the previous panels on how to get people uh, uh, well prepared to be active and so on. With augmented reality, we might have learning completely different from the way we do it today. Uh, so you can have the ecosystem to imagine that you have uh, specific competence or specific use cases, but you don't have the infrastructure to do it. With augmented reality, you can be anywhere 
in Africa, in South Africa, in Central Africa, in Tanzania, Kenya, and you have a virtual ecosystem where you can try to put in practice your ideas. Uh, that's few things that maybe I wanted to, to comment on and the way I see it happening in or put in practice in Africa. Thank you, Lamine. I, I want to add on the... Yes, Moran. Yeah, I want to add about... So we are talking about the infrastructure. The connectivity that he was talking about is the base. This is what we need. It's like water, electricity of every day. It's the, we need to have this before starting anything. Uh, in artificial intelligence, we talk about data centers where we put our data, where we save our data. It's not logical that we are a country of Africa and our data is in Europe or in the US. So we need to think about um, how we can uh, solve this problem of connectivity. Uh, we are not talking about Algeria, but everyone in Africa. And uh, the second thing, how we are going to, where, where we are going to, start the, to store our data. So this is the second thing. Uh, but before talking about this infrastructure, we need to think about the ethic. Because when we would like to build something, we need to start from the, the beginning. The ethic of artificial intelligence, the ethic of the virtual reality, the ethic of any technology. This is very important. Um, and, and by the way, if we're talking about a strategy for any, anything that we'd like to do, like startups, uh, artificial intelligence, we need to put things in a positive way. because. We are in a world that, of course, the technology is developed uh, very, very fast, but at the same time, we have some people that are trying to use this te technology to destroy things. So we need to build things that uh, we are going to, uh, to do th positive things, to develop things for the country. We are talking about the next generation. Uh, why Africa? Africa is going, to be, is going to be the next South Asia like the, the revolution that we saw in Singapore, in Hong Kong. Everywhere, where you go, the US or Europe, people are thinking about Africa because of this, not only natural resources, but the human resources too. All the competences, talents that we have in Africa, and also we have the, the space to do whatever we want, uh, to develop things in technology, and we are starting from scratch. It's, it's like an engineer, so I have been an engineer, when someone is showing me a code, it's very complicated for me to understand it and solve the problem, fix it, then I start things from scratch, like me developing this code. So I think we have this opportunity to develop wherever we want. We are talking about artificial intelligence, we are talking about the virtual or X reality, not only virtual reality, we are talking about augmented reality. We are talking about startups, but let's do it in the right way. We don't need to create things from uh, scratch. We can copy a model that has been in the US universities, uh, US economy schools, uh, people that they thought about it for a decade, for generations, and then we apply it, and then we do it in, in a way of uh, kind of specific things about Africa. We have something unique in Africa, which is not in Europe, not in America. Let's make it you need for African with uh, international model. This is, this is the, the way I, how I think. Thank you. Isaac, please. <laughs> je, suis, je, suis, je, suis, je suis vraiment très, très impressionné par, par les contributions et les points de vue d'experts euh, depuis nos discussions d'hier. Et, et, et je voulais le regarder et le partager avec vous aussi d'une autre euh, perspective parce que quand on a fini de regarder les, les tendances technologiques et, et, et où est en train de partir le monde, j'ai l'avantage de ma position de président du conseil d'administration de l'Union Postale Universelle d'être sur plusieurs continents et avec plusieurs acteurs qui sont certainement en dehors de l'Afrique et des fois très loin de l'Afrique mais qui sont dans de la technologie et sont très avancés. Ce que je voulais partager c'est que premièrement le monde est en train de dire, l'Afrique est l'avenir et l'Afrique c'est maintenant, il faut y aller. Et vous savez ce qu'on est en train de dire C'est qu'il faut qu'on puisse s'adapter à ce que l'Afrique a, que personne n'a dans le monde et qui est l'avenir et sur lequel il faut travailler. C'est l'humain. Vous partez, vous êtes en Algérie, vous partez en Afrique du Sud, vous partez au Nigeria, vous partez au Togo, les Africains ont ça en commun, l'humain au centre. On met l'homme au centre. 
et, et, et au-delà de la technologie et de toutes les solutions, si on commence nous-mêmes à revenir aux fondamentaux qui sont l'humain au centre, la technologie et l'ensemble de toutes les solutions qu'on cite va être la, la cosmétique. Et, 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 et comme on va mettre l'humain au centre et qu'on devra apporter des services aux citoyens, à nos populations, à nos entreprises, mais bien évidemment, la question du KYC ou de l'identité va être un vrai sujet parce que même quand vous développez des porte-monnaies électroniques, des solutions de blockchain, etc., et tout ce que vous voulez en Afrique, la question de l'identité ou du know your customer est un véritable sujet sur lequel on doit être unanime et avoir une feuille de route unique pour l'Afrique. Le deuxième élément, c'est euh, ce qu'on va appeler l'adressage. Vous savez qu'aujourd'hui, la vraie tendance et le vrai business, c'est la combinaison de la logistique et du digital. À la fin de la journée, tout ce qu'on est en train de développer, tendance et tout le bavardage technologique qu'on est en train d'avoir dans nos salons, nos forums et nos rendez-vous, c'est comment on fait la combinaison de la technologie, de la logistique et donc du numérique. Vous parlez de Yassi, vous parlez de tous ces gens-là. Et puis à la fin le service aux citoyens et la force que nous avons, la jeunesse et les femmes qui sont des catalyseurs pour qu'on puisse aller de l'avant. Et moi, je voudrais partager ce angle qu'on a très souvent ignoré pour parler des solutions sophistiquées et digitales et, et solutions alors que l'Afrique n'est pas la prochaine destination ou l'avenir parce que c'est l'Afrique, mais parce que l'Afrique a l'ADN commun que tous les Africains ont, l'humain au centre. Uh, human centric ou, 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 ou comment vous l'appelez et qui va être l'élément qui va driver parce que nos amis qui font dans l'intelligence artificielle vont se retrouver ceux qui parlent de blockchain vont se retrouver tous ceux qui parlent d'innovation vont se retrouver tous ceux qui parlent de finance vont se retrouver parce que en Asie ils ont compris qu'il fallait revenir à l'essentiel, donc à leur ADN. Ils ont été le terreau sur lequel on a fait tout ce qui est infrastructure. Ils ont appris de toutes ces technologies. Aujourd'hui, ils nous dirigent. Quand vous partez en Europe de l'Est, ils ont pris les mathématiques et les calculateurs. Aujourd'hui, c'est eux qui dirigent l'ensemble des process sur tout ce qui est logistique et application. Mais l'Afrique, c'est quoi notre principal sur lequel on va se mettre d'accord pour diriger le monde d'aujourd'hui et de demain C'est ça aussi le point que je voudrais qu'on déblaie parce que la technologie, il y a tellement d'experts autour de nous qu'on est maintenant fier qu'on n'a pas de complexe de l'autre côté, mais maintenant revenons à l'essentiel, l'humain africain. Thank you, Isaac. It's a good point because uh, we talk about a lot of uh, solutions outside and I think we can talk about human, humanity. It's in our DNA. If you go in another country for a conference, traveling, working, when you see an African guy or woman, you have this God's feeling. And you talk about the food, you are talking about your city, uh, you are talking about football, something else. But this culture, We have to develop it inside, here, more. On, we talk about the solution, about AI, identity, and Muhammad can talk about his startup, exactly on the success of his startup, because it's about identity, it's in the field of the digitalization, and maybe this is the first step for Africa to jump to another step. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. So we need to look at identity as in one of the infrastructures, one of the pillars for whatever you need to build. For If you are going for digital transformation, you're not going to be able to do digital transformation without the ability to understand who is the person that you're dealing with. And I will touch on some of the points that have been discussed. So with the data, and you talk about data, the African data being in, in Africa. What we're seeing is not only now that African data need to be in Africa, but each country are going even to the far extent that I need my data to be in my country processed and stored in country. So for a company like us, when we are working in today in 20 countries where we are serving in Middle East and Africa, 
always, if you are dealing with my data, it has to be not only stored, but it has to be processed in country. If you are looking at the European Union, for example, wherever you are within the European Union, you will be able to process data and in some instance also store that data. And we need to work collaboratively within, uh, within the continent and able to address some of these challenges around data sovereignty and, and data privacy. And some of these new technologies we have today around blockchain and uh, it, because if you think at the, the core of, a, of the blockchain, it's you're actually, first of all, it gives you the ability not to store the data in a centralized area. And blockchain is not against government or governments need to be more open around the possibilities, especially now with the openness around some of the use cases that will actually enable and address some of the challenges that we have in the continent. And we need to build solution. I think you touched upon it earlier. We need to build solution for the continent, built by people within the continent who understand the challenges, but with a very open mind to everything is happening around us. And I think we are part of the globe. And we have different challenges in different places. So we need to open up and look at what's happening in the technology around us. And that, by the way, put us on par because a lot of the technologies we talk today about, a lot of the uh, players, they're starting from, from the same level. It's, it's new, it is evolving, and it's not expensive anymore. And in the past, Silicon Valley, and why Silicon Valley has, the start of Silicon Valley and the first startups were in the Silicon, and that's where the name comes from, building the Silicons and building that core infrastructure that enable everyone all the way to the apps, the, uh, the Facebooks, and but because that infrastructure and that steps were there. To, and you have to be in that specific location to be able to innovate. Today we are able to innovate wherever you are. And the most important thing, the most important infrastructure that we have to have across is the connectivity. Once you've got that connectivity, and once you've got the openness of the different uh, countries to be more open to that kind of collaboration and to address these challenges together, and also working in the, and, and I think if, if you look at the, um, the conference here, everyone's talking about the ecosystem. The ecosystem, to build that ecosystem, and I think you touched upon it and for you, it's the startups with the ideas, the venture capitalists that comes in, and the, uh, and the government support. Having a ministry or, or even an authority that's driving the uh, digital economy, that's, uh, and it is in the front of the government policy, I think that should be across all of the nations within our continent, and there should be a very strong collaboration across. My worry is we're gonna miss this golden opportunity that's presented in, in front of us. And some of it will be fear, some of it will be the lack of collaboration and the lack of understanding uh, in two areas. The lack of understanding what the value the new technology will bring to us collectively, and uh, the second point is the lack, the fear that I'm going to be exposing myself or exposing the uh, country by working with either a new technology. And they are the measures that will enable people to work around these challenges. And we have to jump in into this golden opportunity that presented in, uh, in front of us. One small point just to uh, elaborate on this opportunity. If you look today, take electric cars. The electric cars, although it is a mobility and companies like Ford who have been from 1910 or 1930, for over 100 years, 
they missed that opportunity. A very small startup came in and they produced 10% less of Ford uh, Tesla and I think there are 10 times valuation of Ford because these are the companies that looking at the problems of the future. We have and, and a lot of the electric cars today are coming from China, coming from South Korea. They are driving that innovation because everyone is starting from the same place. Right? And a lot of the companies that had that legacy, we're seeing them catching up and trying to come in. If you, today, if you open a bonnet of a uh, supercharged car, that complexity is 100 years of development. The uh, electric engine, again, it's, a, it's something that everyone started to look at it recently, so there isn't that heritage that either gonna delay you or you don't have the technology. The technology is available, it's in front of us. How can we jump into that golden opportunity? Thank you, Mohammed. <clears throat> Sharni? Uh, I wanted to add on the question, or rather the discussion on identity. And um, I had a conversation with one of my fellow experts as well yesterday on the issue of mobility in Africa, and how an African from one part of Africa needs a visa to enter pretty much any other country. And mobility, pan-African mobility is an issue because if you cannot interact, if you cannot meet fellow entrepreneurs or other people, you will always be divided, right? And you will never be able to grow and really uh, realize and fulfill the potential of this um, continent. And I think and I believe that we can use uh, blockchain to dissolve the trust issues that exist between countries. Because not only do people distrust maybe central authority, but they, the, the countries themselves don't always get along. And if we want to solve these mobility identity issues, a public bo blockchain or even a pan-African public blockchain can actually be a solid use case to bring trust. So imagine if you can verify another country's citizen's identity on the blockchain without having to go through the government, you know, all the bureaucracy, how fast would that visa process be thrown out, right? So I think this is a great use case. Yeah. To, 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 to add to this point, look at ECWAS or the um, SADC or any of the economical zones within, uh, within Africa you are able to cross the border with your ID. If you cross the border with your ID to the next country, you are not going to be able to get any service. So you're literally stuck. You're not going to be able to, uh, to do any financial transaction digitally. You're not going to be able to get the SIM card. You are officially there on your national ID. And because what, what you've said is there is no way that you're able to, to actually verify that document because people are used to the passport and it is a legal document for travel. But according to the rules and regulations, like for example, for an ECWAS, you are moving between Togo and Ghana, you're, moving, you're going to Lomi, crossing the border, you're stuck. And whether it's a blockchain, whether it's decentralized, there is now the technology is available. And the good thing is, Today, if you look at Smart Africa, is actually having a program today, and they're saying how we will be enable people to cross border and to be able to transact and to be able to verify who they are. And these are the steps in the right direction where it's, it's painfully slow steps, but we have to go through that process and address these small challenges so then we are opening our economies and we are enabling people to transact digitally to the technology will enable that build of the economy. And I think everyone is uh, growing into that fact right now. Okay, if you don't mind, I, don't, I want to do it. You were talking earlier on about uh, putting the, the, the human, the African human in the center and that uh, technology is uh, kind of cosmetic or kind of helping. I kind of disagree with you. So I agree that we need to keep the human, but I think we're already doing it problematic that we have here in Africa is that we have a lot of issues, just like everywhere, but we have many issues here. And a lot of issues are actually uh, 
sort it through technology. Just like if you want to build, I don't know, something, a wood piece, a cover, something like that, you are going to use a hammer or something like that. Technology is the same. You're talking about putting the human. So when we work in, the, in tech in general, lately we're using a agile methodology, we're using lean, etc. The old concept is to put the human in the middle, define the issue, define the problem, and then from that point on, try to find solutions. And especially using agile methodologies, doing in small batches so we can actually adapt very easily. One example coming from your country, from Ivory Coast, from Côte d'Ivoire, is a few years ago there were some floods in Au Village that you might know. They actually created an app overnight in 24 hours to actually locate the people that were actually had issues. They put that on national TV and that actually helped help save a lot of people's lives. So to my point, the idea is that we need indeed to keep the human, but uh, the technology is just a tool that is very, that's helping us to actually facilitate that. Now, in order to do that, I heard that in the different panels, we need education. You mentioned universities. I'll give you an example from, from the family. So Farid here, Farid Arab here in the room. Ten years ago, I created the Web Days here in Algeria. A lot of people have been participating. And the whole idea was to say, we go for a weekend or a full week into a university. We go to youth, to the young people. We tell them what, we ask them what are the difficulties. They come over with difficulties that they feel they can actually work on. And then over, again, a week, sometime a weekend, and I'm talking about kind of hackathons, so Friday to Sunday, nonstop, even at night, working on different possibilities. And out of that, out of that weekend or that week, we had some solution, some that were uh, very theoretical, some others that were actually very tangible. And out of it, after the years, we actually seen these young people from the universities growing up to become entrepreneurs, part of the government, following different careers. And nowadays, we've seen a lot of people actually are starting their companies, etc. So I think that, as you mentioned, the education is important. Now the question is, how do we actually do that to address the issues that we have? And coming back to the, to the, the tech, I think you mentioned it with uh, Web3, with what you're doing and blockchain. The, the question is, how do we actually address that? Outside the continent, when I go to Europe, when I talk to my counterparts in the US, when I talk to my counterparts in Asia, everywhere, I see African everywhere. So I used to work with a client uh, in France, big energy client, and except for the, the top manager, everybody in the tech team, they were, you can just cite the, the whole Africa. There was Senegal, there was Ivory Coast, there was Nigeria, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these people are experts. A lot of them are actually coming from Africa to Europe because this is where they find jobs, they can find good pay, and this is fine. I'm, I, I don't mind with that. The idea is how do we actually make sure that either they can participate, just like today, he came back all the way to Algeria, to, and that's the case, too, I guess, to everybody here on this panel. We came back to Algeria to actually share things and possibly as well to, to, to invest in terms of time, resources, finance. How do we make sure that the people here on the ground get enough education? And I think on the pre Spaniel as well, we are talking about uh, education for everybody and possibly with a focus on women to make sure that people get a good understanding of what is the technology, how it can help them to solve issues, real issues that we have, and how we can actually benefit working with partners from all over the world to actually achieve solutions that will be uh, solving the, the, the issues the, that we have. Uh, I will, uh, yes, Isaac. Uh, intéressant. Peut-être que un début de où est-ce qu'on doit partir maintenant et qu'est-ce qu'on doit faire parce que je suis euh, d'accord avec tout le monde que on n'a plus de complexe euh, sur des questions de technologie ou de connaissances parce que euh, dans une discussion avec des pays nordiques euh, une des destinations où on recrute le plus d'experts euh, en termes de coding et en termes de, de développement de, de logiciels, c'est l'Algérie. Ils ne vont plus en France, ils vont maintenant dans les pays nordiques parce que la capacité de l'Afrique de produire des compétences en termes de technologie est énorme. Maintenant, peut-être que sur le continent, il faut qu'on se parle ou bien qu'on trouve un, un bon moyen d'interagir parce que quand on parle de de KYC ou d'identité, 
Smart Africa est en train de travailler sur un vrai programme de KYC africain où quand je quitte en Côte d'Ivoire jusqu'au jusqu Rwanda ou dans un autre pays, il faut qu'on soit capable de me tracer de sorte à ce que, bien évidemment, chacun des pays aura euh, la souveraineté des données des concitoyens, mais au moins sur le continent, on est capable d'avoir une traçabilité. Donc je pense qu'on n'a plus de complexe à ce niveau-là, mais il faut trouver peut-être la meilleure plateforme ou la meilleure manière de collaborer pour que non seulement la technologie puisse servir le continent, mais qu'on puisse sur la base des fondamentaux qu'on a euh, à, à, à aller de l'avant. Donc peut-être qu'il faut qu'on regarde quel est notre point de vue de comment on met les choses en interaction pour que l'Afrique tire un bon bénéfice de, de, de ces nouvelles tendances et de ces technologies qu'on a mais qui peuvent se, se servir de population. So when, and it's, it's not because U.S. is doing it or Europe is doing it. What we have in common in Africa, we have the same priorities. Algeria has the priorities national. I think the priority national in Algeria, with Côte d'Ivoire, the le, le Sudan, and also the Togo, for us, it's healthcare. It's the health Yeah, it's the healthcare. Yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, translate everything. So we have this in common. If we tackle all the issues of the national priorities in Algeria, in Africa, we'll find our ecosystem. And it's going to be our identity. Because healthcare, energy, education, these things are very important in Algeria, and I'm 100% I'm sure 100% sure that they are important in Africa. And then we use technology as a tool to solve this. And what, what, at the end of the day, we, we will have our platform 100% African. Mohamed, please. And I think this is a very good point because yesterday on the briefing that we had, one of the things that we've been talking about is passporting for organizations, I said, the problem, everyone, every country think, think it's unique. There isn't any unique country in this world. No one has got a unique problems. No one has got something different. Yes, there might be some special area or there are differentiators, but we are all looking at the same problems. There are, there are startups today. And when we say startups, some of these can be uh, a unicorn startups or scale-ups, call them whatever you want, in across, across the continent. And we're seeing that ecosystem is growing in some countries more than others, but with the collaboration, and I give a, a very uh, example. By us being here, we are actually talking to two Algerian startups that we're actually going to collaborate. One of them, they're going to be using our technology and embedded their technology into theirs. The other one, they have a very unique solution that will help us to give new features that we we're looking to add into our platform. So event like this and the collaboration, because let's take away the idea we are unique. We're not. No country is unique in this world. We are facing the same problems. We have solutions to these problems that have been developed in the continent, and we, sh we, we should work collaboratively. We have an event like this should, I think, and we're seeing a lot of them happening, but it's, we need to come to this with the idea and open mind of collaboration and working together. Thank you. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I, just, I just wanted to comment a bit on the, on the same way. I think as a continent we're unique, not only from historical or geographical specific, specificities, but like we said, because we are currently at the same time having the same challenges, but we are not alone, right? And we need to take advantage from not being alone by learning from others. And here what I mean is that we have the opportunity to do technology for good and take the opportunity to do things or at least to try to do things right from the first time. I think this is 
what we need to learn also from other experiences outside of Africa. And, and also we need, we need to move away that the, the border, like for example, take Okuda as an example, the founder is Sudanese, the company in the UK and Dubai, we have 18 nationalities. How do you describe us as a company? We're a true digital nomads, right? Why do we say an Algerian company, a Sudanese company, a Togayan company? If, if I'm solving the problem in 20 countries and our sea level, we are from four different countries, two, uh, three of us from Africa, fourth is from Europe, and we are working together from different, uh, different nationalities, coming from different backgrounds, and I think this is part of our success as an organization because we see ourselves borderless. We don't see gender, we don't see color, and it will be amazing if we, as a continent, as companies, be more open, working collaboratively together and uh, addressing our problems. And I will close with one statement. Um, and I mentioned this when we were in the Smart Africa event. It, the reason we're in Dubai, because I can't, we cannot be based in, in any African city for two reasons. Number one, one of my colleagues who is based in, uh, between Accra and Lagos, wherever we're going across Africa, I will be there before him. I will be before him like a day before him traveling from Dubai, right? Coming from wherever you are, I would say all of the people here who come from any African country, the majority of you came through a connection and that connection might be even outside of the continent. So not the connectivity beyond the, uh, beyond this, the uh, phone connectivity, there is that connected, and again, when I roam, I roam with the UK SIM because when I roam with my UK SIM, I actually get uh, across with the majority of the countries that I go to, I get it free. I get free service, by the way. A lot of these countries free service. And <laughs> sorry, <laughs> some of the big telcos, all of them, by the way, yeah, all all of the big telcos, a lot of them, they are in ten plus countries. And you still, with one of them, each country I go to, I have to go to a new SIM card and I have to go to a new connectivity and I have to wait for half an hour on an airport to get a SIM card. Right? Why can't we let... If, and that again comes to the collaboration. We have to work together to address these small points that enable us to collaborate, to work together. The human, and I think we all talked about, the human power that we have here is immense is immense and if we give the youth the jobs here right and enable them rather than me i have i have algerians moroccans egyptians sudanese kenyans in the company south africans uh nigerian and ghanaian and the rwandese all, all where are they based majority of them based in dubai we don't want to but we have to, right? We'd love to. I will just add <clears throat> uh, an, an example of my company, Africanda, based in Tunisia. Uh, I did a benchmark about its building innovation here on my own pathway in Tunisia or copying. So I saw the ecosystem in Estonia and in Chile, and I say, okay, <clears throat> I will start Africanda in innovation center to teach people for free to become data scientists, architect big data, on working in the field of AI. The business model is very simple. Tunisia is the second country in Africa to provide engineers. The first is Egypt, uh, 13,000 engineers per year, 8,000 per year, 8,000 are uh, in the field of IT. Only 3,000 can work in Tunisia, 5,000 on the bench. So. I attract people with a program, six months, teach you, uh, I, during, uh, in 2018, to attract uh, some professor from Berkeley, from Singapore, and from France. They teach people, my people. We started with 25 talent, three nationality, Tunisian, Cameroonese, 
on Algeria. Now, after f approximately four years, we are 400. We are the first company to help the French government, so it's not our accident or Europe in Africa, but it's Africa in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. And we help some uh, startups, NGOs, about the data, because the data is the future, and the future is now. And now the question is, do we copy the ecosystem in Africa or build our own pathway here with not the complexity, but complexity is in our DNA in Africa. And we have to detox our ego, me first, to develop this Africanity in innovation on how we can share this experience between each country because we have North Africa, South, West and the East and we need more to be involved and more inclusion in our experience to see what's going on in another country and in Africa of course and to copy it in our country. So Farid said that we have only two minutes to close this beautiful panel. We need more times, I know. Uh, we'll start with Lamin, the final words, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, again, I think, uh, we, we, as I said, we are unique, but not alone. So we need, for sure, to develop technology for good. I think that's one thing important, very important for Africa. We need sustainable technology. We need to learn on how to protect our spaces, including cyberspaces. We don't talk that much about it, but it's important, very important for the future of uh, the future development of technology that uh, we are ready to face it. Thank you, Lamin. Isaac? Ce que je voulais dire, peut-être pour terminer, c'est on a, on a pas mal de rendez-vous de ce type euh, sur le continent et, et, et on, on a plusieurs déclarations sur le continent, mais on pense tous la même chose. Peut-être qu'il faut faire l'exercice de trouver un meilleur moyen euh, de mettre les choses euh, dans une seule direction pour qu'on puisse finalement euh, faire de ce continent euh, un des catalyseurs du développement du monde. Donc, euh, l'exercice principal, ce n'est plus la technologie, mais c'est comment on se met ensemble pour devenir un continent fort et, et, et dans une seule direction. Thank you, Isaac. Inshallah. So, following up on this, his thought, um, and the last couple of days that I've been here, and, I, and I, I hope, I'm not being presumptuous, and I hope, and forgive me if I'm being ignorant, but what I hear a lot is, this is a conference and this is a time for Pan-Africa and for trying to get the African nations to come together, to work together, to collaborate for a better future for everyone. And I also understand from having been here that it's a lot more difficult and complex than it sounds because there are a lot of different governments, a lot of different interests at stake, and it becomes really difficult to get everyone to play along together. Because of the historical legacy of Africa, you absolutely don't want to invite anyone in from outside. You want this done ground up from Africa, in Africa, for Africans. And I think the answer there is to use technology, particularly blockchain, distributed technology, to then allow this collaboration pan-Africa in a way that does away with the problems of trust. And I think this is the takeaway for me from this um, fantastic conference. And I hope uh, the next year, or in March actually, when we come back, we have some concrete solutions, inshallah. Thank you, Sharjin. Mohammed? There are things that we cannot solve today, but if you look at the majority of the uh, challenges in front of us, technology can actually solve a far the technology available today and even av available whether from the continent or with the continent flavor addresses a lot of the challenges that we're facing today. It's just we need to collaborate and work, work more closely together. But I think that the future is bright and I hope that we're not going to miss this golden opportunity that presents itself in front of us. 
Thank you, Mohammed. Murad. I think uh, technology is the new electricity. And uh, data is the new oil and water. And you know how much is important water is and is going to be in the future. We see it in the US. We don't have water in California. So we know what does it mean water. And data is the new water. We know colonization very well as African. We don't want to be colonized by our data again. So be careful. We need to plan today if we would like to be a leader in the future. Uh, Americans, they always say uh, a storytelling. So I created Algeria AI as a startup in Silicon Valley in 2019. I created the same startup here, Algeria AI, in 2021, after the COVID. So I would like to be, or any African, I would like that any African will be like the opposite of Elon Musk. Instead of born in South Africa, go to California, create Tesla, we would like to do the opposite. Why not any African today can create the same Tesla or Amazon or Google in Africa and all continents like Europe, Asia, or America is going to take advantage of this company. This is the dream I have. Thank you. Thank you, Murad. Chris? Thanks. Um, last word. So, of course. We have experienced how mobile technology has impacted Africa. And at the time, we were talking about a leapfrog. So basically going faster. So I think that blockchain technology, web free, video games, 5G, etc., will help us as well leapfrog and create more opportunities all over Africa. So I just want to make sure that, and just one thing, as we speak, there are a lot of people are, uh, right now which are connected on different channels, learning them by themselves, maybe in university, so they're not waiting for us anyway. So I just hope that we'll be, uh, we'll be meeting uh, with their expectations, and this is as well one reason, and I'm going to cite Patricia on the previous uh, panel, this is one reason why I moved from tech to as well moving into investing in order to be able to try to help people to actually accelerate that phase so that we can use technology as tools to solve our problem and again using the people that we have in the diaspora on the continent and we're very con uh, convinced that we have that opportunity. Thank you, Chris. So, as I resume, less talking, more action, sharing our network, sharing our experiences. I hope... Uh, this conference will be the, the, the first step of our actions and uh, I hope next year and the other years we will develop more and more our continent. I'd like to hear uh, uh, your last word as well because I know you're a big player as well in the, I mean, in the, in the, on the continent. Okay. As I said yesterday, uh, we have to share our network because if we can share our network, our network will die. So we have here a lot of experts, we have here a lot of people. We have to be more intra-connected, each other, to see what's going on in Tunisia, what's going on in Singapore, what's going on in Algeria, in Ivory Coast, in Sudan, in Togo. This is very important. And as I said before, we have to detox our ego and me first. We have to develop this DNA, this Africanity, because it's in our blood. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me t tell you one story that I had in the U.S. Um, so once I took Uber, okay, and uh, the driver was African American. So we have been talking. He, he thought that uh, uh, I was American until I started st talking, and he said, "You have a small accent." I said, "Yes, I am from Algeria." Oh, Nigeria? I said, "No, no, Algeria." I said, uh, "You are from Africa?" I said, "Yes." You don't look like African. Yeah, because we have a huge diversity. He said, so you are a brother. So it's the only word that we use in all continent, that we are all brothers.
All Africans are brothers. You cannot use it in any other continent. So let's take advantage of this too. Thank you.